Hey guys, Henny Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are showing you a free chapter from our newly released Introduction to Substance Painter. In the full series, you are going to be seeing how to take uh, how to take an approach to Painter where you you're brand new to it. We cover stuff like you know introduction and the and the UI. You know what is Painter about? We cover how to build up materials. We cover a lot of the most used features. You, you have in general. Yeah, it's a it's really a more project focused introduction to Painter that we've tried to make more unique instead of a standard click this button, click this button, but it also focuses on the fundamentals of texturing and uh, you know doing hand painting. Because oftentimes in tutorials, I think that's one of the main parts that's missing. They purely show you the tool, but we want to also make sure that you have the fundamental skill set to actually texture these assets. Yeah, so the first part of it is going to be using actually tools. Because you know, you need that as well. You need to actually know of how course. to use a fill layer. <laughs> but then uh, once we've gone through a lot of these, like the fill layers, the generators, how do you how do you make some nice masks, uh, smart materials, all these really nice features working with opacity, then we go through and we show you how to actually texture a fan, which is provided by Simon Pelikin. And uh, this is, we start here from start to finish. We take it from um, the final model in Maya, which has been UV'd into Painter, where we will bake all the maps and then very methodically and in a professional way, building up the materials as we go along with that. But yeah, so here, um, enjoy this uh, first free chapter of, uh, of the introduction to Substance Painter and uh, make sure to come back for more. Hey guys, welcome to this very exciting introduction to a Substance Painter tutorial from Flip Normals. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> In this series, we're going to take you from basically brand new to Painter to fairly advanced, where you can go about your own projects from starting them in Maya to taking them into Painter and just make really awesome textures. Painter is really one of my favorite texturing applications. Mm. It's fairly easy to learn and you can get very cool results super quickly. Yeah, we want to make sure that this doesn't just become yet another introduction where you're like, oh, drag this smart material on here and now you're done. We actually want to cover some theory about how to approach texturing, whether it doesn't really matter which software it's in, but now we're applying it to Painter. So hopefully you'll be able to avoid this sort of generic Painter smart material look once you start texturing. Yeah, that's really the goal of this. It's gonna be in two main parts. The first one is we're gonna be using our trusted uh, uh, meat mat shader um, object. And the second one is we're going to be going through a project, yeah. an actual really, really cool fan model, which is going to serve as a more practical example. Before you start with anything, we want you to either follow the link in the, pro in the project or just Google substance PBR. Here you have two guides. You have the first one, which is theory, and then you have a second part, which is the more practical guidelines for PBR. This is really a must read if you're serious about texturing. It covers basically how light behaves in a very easy to digest manner. And it might, you might think that, oh, well, I'm just gonna be doing texturing. I don't need to know about how light works, but it's a little bit different now now that you'll be working in substance and so much of it, I mean, it's, it's based around PBR. That's how you work with the yeah. materials in substance. So getting a proper, no, like a good background and, and getting all the knowledge about PBR is, is gonna be essential. Yeah, when you're texturing, you're, what you're really doing is you're just describing how light reacts to a surface and what the surface is. So it's really important to have a good understanding of that. And then also when we start our, um, if you wanna follow along to any of this, we can just go to open sample and you can choose this guy, meet Matt. This is the one we've opened here. Let's just do that. So here we have a guy. So now we have a perfectly standard substance project, which you can just use your heart content. This is this is a good project because it's first it's very simple in terms of modeling. There's not a lot of fancy stuff going on, but also we have different parts like a head body and a base, and we have a bunch of maps already baked for it. We're we'll covering this a bit later on, but you can see that we have stuff like uh, curvature maps and AO maps and uh, these kind of things. This yeah. is gonna serve you a lot better. And if you try if you try to start your own project right now, you're just missing a, a bit of knowledge on how to actually get started. One of the annoying things about Painter is that you can't just drag your model into it. No. You gotta you gotta actually do some prep work beforehand. And this is one of the ways where substance differs a little bit from traditional texturing. 
where normally you would just get started. You have a model and you just slap on a texture from CG Textures and you just get going. But with the prep that you have to do for Substance also you know, comes with a little bit of a reward and that is you being able to use smart materials and have this sort of procedural workflow that you don't really have anywhere else. Yeah, this if you if you want to do this in another paint, painting software, it's going to be so much slower. Yeah. So yeah, a bit slower start, but a lot faster as you go get along. And just for those who might not be aware, we tried to figure out how to best explain this. So Substance is a procedural software. It's a procedural painting software. And we tried to simplify it down to it is like you're never committed to the strokes that you do or the materials that you apply. You'll be able to uh, up res your textures if you started at 512 you you'll be able to up res them to 4k with no issues so that's the sort of another advantage of painter yeah exactly that's uh that's huge yeah it means you can work in a very low resolution and then just if performance is an issue just render them out export them out a higher one yeah another thing we wanted to be able to talk about before we get too deep into into painter is it's again the theory of it traditionally when you when you're doing texturing you are painting maps. You you might if if you come from Photoshop doing that and take it into into a shader, you're simply just painting uh, maybe a color map, a diffuse map, albedo, whatever you call it. Now you might convert that to black and white, do some levels, some hacky grading on top of it, <laughs> and now you plug this into some shaders and you just cross your fingers that it looks all right. This is not the way we do this in Painter. We start with materials and we really work with materials. We always think about the color, the height, the, the roughness, all mm. these things at the same time. One of the things which people tend to put on a pedestal when it comes to texturing is the color map, how the color map is the most important one. In reality, it's really not. In reality, it needs all the work together. When we've been working on characters for, for film, your bump map, for instance, is yeah. one of the most important. Well, height map is one of the most important one. Color can be quite blurry, yeah. And so roughness and and height bump, whatever you call it, is really important. So we're not getting too deep into that right now, but just know that we're painting materials. We're not painting individual maps. And that's also one of the reasons why, or I would say the main reason why you should learn to understand what exactly is PBR. Yes. Because we are painting materials. You are direct. You're not just most people aren't just going to be texture artists nowadays. They are going, they are going to be surfacing artists. Yes. A combined role of texturing and look dev. Because as you're painting, it's so much easier for you to define how the material reacts to light than a, a shading artist who hasn't been sitting with, uh, with the character or the asset for as long as you have. And you have direct control over it. So it eliminates... A lot of back and forth between departments. It also eliminates a job. <laughs> um, but that—that that is how you should start to think of it. So it means that we can just add a layer. We're going to talk more about, of course, everything we're doing right now later on. But it means that you can add a layer like this. And you can get like a cool goldish material right away just yeah. because you can, you can adjust this at the exact same time and you really have control over this. So with, with all this said, let's actually get into Painter. <laughs> the navigation is very standard. It's alt left mouse button to rotate, it's alt middle mouse button to pan around, and alt right mouse button to zoom in and out. Very simple stuff. If you hold down the alt and shift and then left mouse, now you can snap to the different views as well. You can technically change to front side top view and all that, but I just find the two, just shift and then just snap to the views. Shift, alt and left mouse button. Yeah. Of course, we're going to be including a a hotkey list yes. for you guys as well. And, and Substance actually has a UI built-in hotkey list as well, which is quite handy sometimes. Yeah. So we have our tools to the left. We we have chapters in most of these later on as well. So paint tools, you know, you just you just find everything over here, racing, and most of your tools are gonna be here. If you want to change the size of whatever it is you're doing, you know, you can do that right here. The flow, opacity, everything is right here. Then we have our different views. So if you just click here, you can see 2D and 3D view. This is the 2D view is just your UV map. So this is again why it, you require some prep in Maya, Blender, Max, whatever it is, because yeah. you have to actually make UVs. And that's just because, you know, you just have to. That's how texturing works. <laughs> that's how texturing works. Then we have 3D view, and then we have 2D view only. The majority of the time you're going to be working only in 3D view. Then we have perspective view and ortho view. Again, ortho view is 
it's not incredibly handy. Most of the time you're gonna be spending your time in perspective view just so you can you can see more what it's gonna look like in the final render. Ortho view is handy if you want to, let's say you want to do like a, a clean stroke from uh, from one from one side to the other, and it doesn't. It's not affected by by anything else. It's yeah, just a no perspective or anything. No perspective. Very clean stroke. So can be useful. Most of the time, stick to perspective view and stick to just three uh, D view only. If you hit the tab key, everything disappears apart from these guys. This is something you're going to be doing once you get a bit more advanced into mm. it. The majority of the painting can actually be done just with. Um, just with, with hotkeys. Yeah. And of course, we're covering all that in, in later chapters. Then we have texture set lists. Texture sets are materials. This is different from in your regular 3D software, like we come from Maya, and there you're thinking about objects. That objects are important because you, you need to think about the hierarchy. What is one on top of the other, because that's important when it comes to grouping of the scenes, rigging and all that kind of stuff. In Painter, we don't care about any of that. The hierarchy can be super complicated, but we only care about materials. So let's say uh, we have um, we have some glass shaders in, in our scene, and then we have some metal and some wood. We don't care at all about how they come together. What we care about is that they're collected as materials. So for the glass, we would just select all the glass materials and apply a glass shader to it. The wood, all the wood shader, and just so on. So if we split this now into um, into 2D and 3D, you can also use the hotkeys F1, F2, and F3. This is how I'm working. You can see if we switch from these that they are now, uh, they have different UV maps for them. This is how you split them up in uh, in Maya. Yeah, and all you need to do, whether you're in Maya, Max, or Blender, is just assign a different uh, a different shader uh, in whatever 3D software you're working with. And then once you import them into Painter, they'll be ordered like this, and also they'll be named based on, on your shader. So texture sets are really important. You're not going to be de dealing with this a whole lot. Most of the time it's going to spend in layers palette, but it's, this is one of these for, for setup. Yeah. You really have to spend time on getting this set up. Let's just go back to our 3D view. You can also, if you hold down Alt or Control, Alt and right mouse button, now you can see that you can switch, quickly switch between them. Again, that's one of the things we're just talking about. You don't have to use, you, you can we can work like this and just switch between them. You don't actually have to have the interface open. In the beginning, of course, you really want to have the interface open. That's <laughs> yeah, a lot to remember in the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Then we have the texture set settings. This is where you can choose the size of each of your texture sets. So you can set one to be five, uh, 500, and then you can set one to be 2K. So th these are completely independent of each other. And you can have different shaders for them as well. These settings should never change because this is dealing with the gamma for each channel. Just know that this is... This is default. <laughs> this is default, and unless you know what you're properly doing, and even then you shouldn't change them because this has been set up correctly to yeah. work with physical-based shaders. Then we have bake mesh maps. This is really one of the most integral parts to Painter, and we're not going to be covering this at all right now until we get to the fan part of it. Because there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, and it has to be covered properly. Yeah. If you if you skip this step, then everything you do is going to be rushed. You can't really work with smart materials at all without having mesh maps. If you just want to paint something, like you want to just purely hand paint something, then this doesn't matter. But for, for the majority of your work, you really want to bake these maps. And that's basically it for texture sets. Very, very useful stuff. And you, you just have to you just have to understand these settings. Uh, Alt-Q to isolate as well. Really, really useful stuff. It's a good hotkey. Very good hotkey. It's a good isolation hotkey. <laughs> I think that was a hotkey for isolation in Max, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Back 10 years ago. Not like in Maya, where it's control and one now. <laughs> yeah. I came up with that. Very confusing. So then we have the layer stack. This is again where we're going to be spending the majority of our time, and it's very similar to to Photoshop. If you're familiar with Photoshop or Mari or any other software which has a layer stack, yeah. very similar similar stuff. Here you delete your layer. Here you can add a folder. This is where you add a smart material to whatever it is you're doing, or you can drag it from the shelf. Then we can make a fill layer. Filler is the next chapter, and this is one of the things we just have to tackle very early on, as this is one of the most useful things in in Painter. 
you're going to be dealing with this so much. This so this is like one long teasing chapter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if you get hungry, good. Then we have a regular layer. This is where you can just paint normally, like you used to. Then we have layer masks, where you can add a black and white mask. I personally never used this menu. I, I, this is like the second time in my life I'm clicking this, because I'm just using right mouse button and just clicking here. Mm. Personal preference, whatever you, whatever you prefer. Then we have effects. This is one thing which can modify either your current layer or to your mask. So if you have a mask of this, then we can add, for instance, add a fill layer to it or a generator levels. We're covering this extensively later yeah, on. Yeah, that menu is is super, super powerful. And yeah. that, that's really where all the proceduralness of, of substance starts to shine. You, But you'll see that future in the future <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, you can basically paint all your maps you ever need in using like add generators yeah. and one filler. <laughs> then if you're clever what you're doing, then you can, you know, if you, if you can't paint, if you can never hand paint, you could probably get to a decent result with only yeah. these things. So that's why we are not covering them at all right now. <laughs> Same with uh, the painting or the properties tab. This is where you, whatever tool you have, you get different properties for them, which is going to be covered in the respective chapters. One cool thing, you can paint right here. Just a preview paint. Just a preview the paint. Then we have the, um, the shelf. This is where all your resources will live. So if you have, uh, if you want a material, if you want concrete, you're just going to drag and drop concrete onto it. And hopefully now it's starting to make sense why Painter is so powerful, because you can just drag and drop these materials onto your, your objects and you just have something cool right away. But this is precisely also why we want to cover um, more the theory of texturing so you don't do this yes like yes you should start like this but we want to hopefully teach you during this course how to get away from everyone using the same concrete material yeah if you al already right now you could you could pass for a student texture artist yeah. just by dragging and dropping these kind of things but that's if it was that easy then everyone would be doing it yeah so we we're gonna we're gonna go more in depth on that later on then we have uh are uh, different settings here like display settings. This is where you can choose to what view mode do you have? And you can see that's exactly the same as that one. And it's there because this is one of the most useful things you're gonna be doing in Painter. So we, by default, is selecting the entire material. Like we, like we talked about in the beginning, you're not painting maps, you're painting no. materials. So you can still see your maps though. So base color, metallic. This is one of the things to talk about in, um, in the PBR workflow, you just need to get this, is your object metallic or not? This is not a metallic object, so no. Roughness map, normal map, height map, and um, then the different maps as well. So we have like the mesh maps. These maps are the ones generated from the baker. This is why this is why this is a good project because you already have these baked and yeah. they're really good. The, you don't necessarily have to understand exactly what a world space normal map is. The, the point of these is more to understand that the different shaders will be using this differently. Yeah. So curvature, position, all these kind of things, really, really important to whatever is to all your to all your texture needs. You can also use hotkeys for this. If you want to go between um, uh, the the single channel ones, you can just hold down, the, hit the C key, and now you go through them. You just toggle through them here and Shift C to go back. To go to the baked maps ones, you hit the B key just to go back and Shift B. To go back, yeah, B forward, shift B back. You're gonna be doing this quite a lot. The most yeah. useful one here is the C key because you're gonna check your individual maps. Like we said, we aren't, you're not, you aren't gonna be painting maps. You're gonna be painting materials, but you still need to look at your maps. You still yeah. have to have a good overview of what they actually look like. So going between something like material and base color, that's gonna be fairly common. Yeah. So then the hotkey is N for material. So C to go toggle between these and N for material. Yeah. This is something which is just gonna become muscle memory for you. And I recommend that you just get used to this. This menu doesn't exist, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's way more handy if you just, yeah, if you if you just get used to it. I, I use this menu here just to see what map I'm actually viewing, because that can be quite handy. Mm. But in terms of actually going through it, you never wanna do that. Then we have our environment. Let's just enable opacity. And now we can see our environment. The lighting in Painter is all based on IBLs or image-based lighting. This is this this is simply just means you're using image, you're using HDRI for this. 
This is where we have our own pack, the Flipnormus HRIs, which they work really well in Painter, and in some ways they work a lot better than the default ones. Yeah, we have a lot of different studio setups that are more neutral than the standard environments and a little more exciting than the, their black and white uh, studios. But, you know, the default stuff that is in Painter is also really good. Yeah. They work for most things. Yeah. As a word of warning with these, notice that how much the color actually change and when you when you just change this around become it become a lot more green and even more so if you have more reflective materials onto it yeah because they depend so much on the color around them so it's dangerous to paint with something which is which has too much color like this i would never paint with this no. because now everything has a bias of green all over it yeah, you want to have something that's fairly neutral, yeah. and then you can always preview your um, your materials in the real environments just to see, okay, what does it look like in the real world? Yeah. The problem is if you start painting like this with the orange one, is that you're going to start compensating for it. Now, all of a sudden, it's like you've had a little layer on top of orange, yeah. and you really want to avoid that. You also want to avoid the ones which are too soft as well, because then, then your reflections are going to look way too soft and you take them into your game engine or uh, your render and you're like, oh man, all my reflections are wrong now. Yeah. So it's a good idea to switch between these a fair bit. I set the, the environment opacity always just to zero. I never want to see it because now let's say you are painting with this. Now you, your eyes are going to be affected by this and yeah. you're not going to see accurate color. So I really prefer one of these ones, which are which are a lot, there is no color in them, nothing to distract you. Then we have the exposure. I would say never, ever, ever touch this because now if you touch this, now suddenly your texture is going to be too bright. If you set it all the way up here and you start painting now, first off, it looks crazy. It will say blender a bit. But um, it means that now your textures, you're going to be painting them far too bright or too dark depending on how you set them. So never, ever touch this when you're painting. Even if it looks better, yeah. even if it looks cooler. Then you've done something wrong in your texture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then we have environment rotation. This is something you're going to be using a lot. Yeah. It's so useful that this is tied to a hotkey. You're not really going to go into this menu. This is um, shift and right mouse button. This is something you're going to be using a lot. Because the moment you're rotating like this and now stuff gets really dark, you need to just rotate it around so you get light in that region. One annoying thing about this workflow is that for, uh, let's try to find a different one. You can't rotate up and down. You can only rotate left to right. So sometimes you end up in an area which is going to be really dark yeah. and you can't really see what you're doing. <laughs> the fix for that kind <laughs> of is to just look at the different channels, see what you're, see what you're doing here. Yeah. Because it's... Yeah, it, if you paint in base color, then you won't be distracted by light either. Yeah. So. Environment blur doesn't really matter what you set to that because you you know opacity is going to set to to um, to zero, so you can see nothing really changes here. Shadows you can enable shadows if you want to. This makes it a bit a bit heavier to <laughs> render, but it, it it can look better for presentation. Yeah. So something you do a lot when you're texturing is you need to present your work a lot. So you can set this to um, I'm not I don't really want to touch this one because I'm not sure how the <laughs> recording is going to react to it. <laughs> but, Intensive. Uh, yeah. But you, you definitely want to disable, set it down from 100, because then it just looks like black. Yeah, and if, if you're painting, I would advise to keep it off. Yeah. Just because it's, yeah, it's distracting, and, you know, you could do weird stuff to your textures because you don't realize there's shadows on. Exactly. And then you can also just click on these, you know, or you can scroll down. So now we have the general environment settings. Click here, you get camera settings. By default, this is set to 17 millimeters, which works really well for just painting your maps, but if you're trying, if you're painting something organic like a human or basically whatever, this is gonna look really weird. You're gonna have that fish look, yeah. where you're like everything is very stretched. You see it kind of already that it's it's there's a lot of perspective on there. Yeah. So you know a focal length of 30, 50, something like that can be nice, nicer to look at. Yeah. It doesn't really impact anything. No, it doesn't impact your texturing at all. It no. just just impacts your visual perception of it. Yeah. And then we have this, <laughs> actually post effects. This is one of these. It's sexy, but you don't want it. No, it's unnecessary. Because now you, if you want to present your work, maybe you want some glare on it, but it means that you can't really see what you're doing. Yeah. So yeah, you saw that before when we uh, increased the exposure, right? The yeah. glare just went crazy. Yeah, exactly. So it's 
<laughs> like you actually can't see what you're doing with this right now. So I would say I would say always disable this. There's no reason at all to ever have this enabled. No. My workflow for painting textures is is a really boring one because I'm like disable all beautiful things. Yeah. Disable everything which makes it look better because I don't want it to look good here. I want it to look correct. I want I want this map, this shader to look exactly the same as it looks in in your uh, in your game engine or in your render engine. So everything which makes it look wrong but better <laughs> it's really bad unless you're presenting work to a supervisor and yeah. you know it's not great and you just want to <laughs> kind of cheat a little <laughs> want to hide it with glare you might have done that a few times <laughs> everything else down here we're going to be covering more in our um, ira chapter it has a uh, painter has a really really good render engine called mm. ira which is super cool but we have a whole chapter dedicated to that so again, another tease. Another tease. <laughs> this one, activate temporal anti-aliasing. Make sure this is enabled. This is one of these make good button. It just makes it a lot easier to see your textures. Mm. This was very recently introduced in, in Painter. So make sure this is enabled. Then we have the shader settings. If When you set up the project, which we're going to be doing in the fan chapter, you're going to be setting which, which shader you want to base it on. We're going to be using metal roughness, which if you read the document, if you know if you, if you haven't, go back and read the PVR document. Pause this video and come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because then you're going to know what metal rough means. There are some other shaders here which are pretty handy for if you want some specific stuff with anisotropic, there might be some good stuff here or different. There are different use cases for them, like layering materials for certain hacks or methods for certain game engines. Like a car paint shader or something. Yeah, there are definitely different materials are coated. But for the majority, we're going to be sticking with PBR, Metal Rough. Or if you want transparency, Metal Rough with Alpha Blend. Or if you want to paint uh, like your characters are in Dota 2, there's a specific Dota 2 material. Yeah, exactly. For some reason. <laughs> yeah. But apart from this, it's not a whole lot of different things we're going to be doing with this. One thing I recommend you to do is to um, disable ambient occlusion. Because this again is one of these things makes it look better than it does. Yeah, <laughs> makes it look grounded, but I don't want to make it feel grounded. I'm I'm not doing this with final rendering. I want to like if you, if you look at this region here in in the center, it looks like it's darker than it is. So again, it's like it's the same as using a colored IBL. You might be compensating because now exactly. you already look like you have some some grunge and some dirt in there. So it, it can be good for previewing, you know, sort of, okay, I, I just want to make sure, how does it look like once we apply some AO to it? Okay, cool. And then you turn it off again afterwards. Yeah, or if you have a AO in your game engine mm. at, at all times, then you'll try, but then try to replicate exactly what it looks like. Because otherwise you are going to be compensating yeah. for these kind of yeah, things. Yeah, then, then you'll have AO in your maps and AO on top of your map. Yeah, exactly. You don't want that. <laughs> no, you really don't. So one last thing we really want to cover is, uh, this is one thing we can really figure out where to put somewhere else. So... Let's put it here. If you want more precision in your uh, in your sliders, you can see here right now it just follows the mouse, and it's usually fine. But if you want more precision, you can hold on the shift key, and now you can see you're going between like 0.77 and 0.80. This is really handy for uh, for a bunch of different things. If you, you want that super specific value, but you don't want to type it with your keyboard. Yeah, exactly. So this is it for uh, the introduction chapter. We are going to be moving into the fill layer chapter in a bit, so we'll see you then. So thank you so much for watching this free free chapter from our introduction to Painter video. If you want to see the full series, it's a four-hour course, and you can find a link in the description.